Hey everyone, it's Gabriel Correjo with Automation Anywhere. Uh, you know, in these unprecedented times, I think it's important that we are getting information out as quickly as possible. Um, we are very lucky here at Automation Anywhere to have Dr. Yan Chow, our head of industry solutions for the healthcare market uh, on our staff. And so I thought today we'd have a little conversation with him to understand what some of those so solutions are that we're, we're tackling, what some of the outstanding issues are that, that we um, can help with and just get his overall take on you know, the state of healthcare and how automation and intelligent automation is helping to solve some of the challenges out there. So Dr. Chow, welcome to uh, the conversation. Hi everybody, uh, thank you Gabe. I appreciate the introduction. I think that uh, we are all locked down and we're all going through a big crisis, a very big disruption in our lives and nowhere perhaps more disruptive than in healthcare. So I'm glad to share what's happening. Great. Um, Dr. Chow, if you wouldn't mind, can you give the audience just a little bit of background uh, on your career and your expertise? Sure. And uh, maybe sure. touch on some of the things you're, you're working on right now. I spent most of my career at Kaiser Permanente, the, the nation's largest integrated care system as a physician. Um, but the last 10 years of that career, I actually spent in the National Innovation and Advanced Technology Group being the director. And in that role, we saw over 2,500 startups um, in all areas of health IT, from AR, AR to AI, uh, telemedicine, mobile apps, everything. And then I got a call from Automation Anywhere. And I think um, I've been here now about 11 months. I think this actually was very intriguing to me, not just because the company was growing so fast, but because I think that in healthcare, we've seen a lot of AI companies uh, trying to pitch you know, their solution. But it's a, it's a big jump from today to the future with AI. I think the first step is automation, which is what we're doing. And then we're introducing AI as people see the return on the, on the automation. So I think it's the right process and I'm very excited about what the company's doing. Over the last 11 months and, and over uh, the, the history of the company, we've dealt, we have the biggest clients in the world in the healthcare space. Um, mm -hmm. Things have changed a little bit, but talk to me a little bit about some of the solutions uh, we've addressed, you know, sort of pre-pandemic and how that's prepared us and our customers uh, to address what's happening now. Well, as you, as you know, Automation Anywhere has been in healthcare for at least 12 years that I can, I can detect. And you know, we've had some of the world's largest healthcare clients. But I think in the beginning, when this company started, we were proposing an automation solution as an automation solution. So the lowest hanging fruit for most healthcare companies was the back office. So it's processing documents, processing forms. And uh, to a large extent, that's basically the focus today as well. Even though we may be going into areas like uh, revenue cycle management or claims processing, those are just different versions of the document processing uh, paradigm. And there's nothing wrong with that. That returns, uh, you know, it returns lots of good stuff very early. But I think as people become familiar with automation and what it can do, and especially in the last two, three years, when we're starting to introduce AI into automation, uh, we have uh, introduced NLP, natural language processing. We've introduced fuzzy logic, machine learning, a lot of advanced capabilities. People are now starting to look at automation or the automation platform as a way to expand the, the use of their, their uh, license, their product, to address non-traditional areas. And that, those are areas where the expertise and the domain specific uh, applications come into play. Uh, and that's why in a sense, we're starting to see um, the uh, advent of attended automation where it partners machine with a human who's an expert. The question that uh, I always ask people is, what is your organization going to look like in the 21st century? Why are you running a 19th century model? So, and that's true for most healthcare. It's not their fault. <laughs> that's the way healthcare is structured in this country. But it, this uh, disruption from COVID-19 is an opportunity to really look at what they have to do to meet a crisis because it brings to a point all the issues with healthcare that people have known about forever, but they've not been able to deal with. So it's a very exciting time. Yeah. When we come out of this, the world will be completely different. And maybe we've accelerated mm -hmm. the digital transformation imperative. Um, mm -hmm because of the crisis. So talk to me a little bit about what these conversations have shifted to sort of in the immediate and then what mm -hmm. that looks like long for a long-term effect. In the immediate uh, crisis, when, when we are at the point of either going up or, or just peaking in the crisis and going down, I think in healthcare, 
uh, specifically healthcare, people are right now overwhelmed. They're dealing with something they've never seen before with many, many related issues, resource issues, supply chain issues, safety issues, uh, capacity issues, all kinds of things that um, people are almost uh, improvising as they go along because there's been no precedent. So at this time, you know, we are sensitive as a company not to um, be to be exploiting this. We don't want to exploit it. We want to be helpful where we can. We know we have things we can offer that can help. So our our position has been to come alongside organizations and say, what are you struggling with? Maybe we can help. Maybe we have a solution that can we can bring without much disruption to your IT network, your storage, your, your IT infrastructure, not much training. We can do things for you. And I've seen a couple of areas where that's gotten some response. One is the issue of contact center expansion. Contact centers are seeing about a 26% increase in their calls since the start of the COVID crisis. That's huge. And so it's not only the numbers, it's the quality of the help. So here's a contact center. They're getting uh, 26% more calls about COVID-19. What do I do? How do I get tested? Things like that. But that contact center also has a link into public health, to infectious disease experts, to their command center. There's a link into the mutual aid organizations that they're linked with in the community, and there are dozens of them. So getting everybody on the same page, coordinating resources across the community, those are things that contact centers don't usually do. Uh, now we have a solution that can uh, upscale a contact center very quickly with a VPN solution for remote workers who are locked down at home. Uh, that's the other issue. Uh, so that's been a great interest to a number of clients uh, who are having that specific problem. Um, the other big, big thing that's happening is that the CARES Act, the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act was just passed into law. It's a $2.2 trillion act, huge, the biggest in history, of which $100 billion is allocated for hospitals on a first-come, first-served basis. And you can imagine hospitals that are being crunched by the cost of COVID-19 really want to be able to, to leverage that, that funding, but they have to support uh, their claim with COVID-19 related documentation. I think that's where automation can help. I mean, a bot can run through a medical record and find diagnoses, can find symptoms and signs. You can run through a cost accounting system. It can run through inventory systems to get an idea that you can use uh, data that you can use to support your claim to tap into this federal aid. Average Joe perspective. Mm. What's the benefit to me? Like, can you, do you have any use mm -hmm. cases? I know you did, recently did a blog about the Macau um, right, website, right. which was relatively simple, but extremely helpful, right? right and actually turned out right. to be sort of critical. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about what, you know, I would, what, the impact that I would see sort of front and center as a, as a normal guy? Right. I think the first need in any pandemic, and we saw this in country after country, is there's a huge need for reliable information. And you would think with the internet that we would have reliable information, but as you know, we have a lot of fake information. And so uh, in Macau, China, for instance, they were, there were five sites that they tapped into, but they got really interesting and useful information, such as what stores had uh, masks in stock and at what price, you know? That's the kind of thing uh, today we're seeing crazy things like people buying toilet paper, like and hoarding toilet paper and things like that. Um, that's from panic and confusion. I think that's a need that, you know, when, when I'm in the middle of a pandemic, I want to find out when is the lockdown going to be lifted? You know, when can I go out and live my normal life? What does my employer require before I come back? You know, will they require me to see the doctor and get tested? What's the availability of, availability of test kits? And all these kind of questions. It's an information issue. Recently, we did a, a in partnership with Microsoft, mm -hmm. created a solution for um, uh, who, do, who COVID tracking documents, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Can you speak a little bit to that? Sure. That was a very interesting use case. In fact, um, the NHS in, in the UK, the National Health Service, were, put out our RFP for people to propose methods to handle the, the volume and, and the throughput of COVID-19 reporting forms that were based on the WHO form called the Case Record Form, or CHR, CRF. Um, and basically the idea was that every time you saw a COVID-19 patient or did anything with COVID-19, you had to fill out this, I think it was a 10-page, no, it was a multi-page form, quite complicated. 
uh, on that to send it to NHS so they could keep track of where the epidemic was going, what the capacity was for that area that it was going to, uh, so they could do some planning, predictive planning. And the issue was that they were getting uh, a load of something like 100,000 forms a day. And so they, the alternative was to hire, I think they estimated hiring 90 FTEs to work for for weeks, you know, before they even get, you know, for weeks, that, that's eternity in an epidemic. <laughs> By the time you get the information back, it's not useful. So they looked for help and they turned to us and to Microsoft, our partner. Uh, we were able to develop a uh, form processing application based on bots for the NHS. In terms of other resources um, at, at the market's fingertips or what we're making available, talk to me a little bit about the A People community um, Automation Anywhere University and some of the things that are happening there. A number of resources that could help for the healthcare uh, market. One is the A People, which is a forum for customers. And it's a very, very useful um, sort of mutual help uh, forum that customers can help themselves, help each other, and share tips and share advice that could really, uh, for, for your developers, really accelerate their, their uh, time to, to a solution. And I have to mention that uh, one of the reasons I, I came to Automation Anywhere is because of their focus on security. Uh, the product is super secure. We have been certified. Uh, we are, uh, we'll be certified in high trust, which will get us to be HIPAA compliance and so on and so forth. A lot of things have been, a lot of care has been taken to make the product super secure. And that's what you want in healthcare. I mean, there's a lot of issues with healthcare that relate to lack of security. And there's almost a security breach every day in healthcare. So if you're looking to develop something that's robust and, um, and something that's monitored and something that's as secure as, as uh, more secure than anything else in the market, I think you have to go with this platform. So I think in terms of speed to market, accuracy, because the bot doesn't, uh, if you design it right, there's no error. In terms of safety, you know, for patients and not just safety for, uh, in terms of uh, data safety and stuff, but for actual people in healthcare, security, those are many, many reasons to, to go with uh, Automation Anywhere. I think it's, it's a great product. And um, I think as people start to use it for more healthcare specific things, and I can tell you a little bit about those, I mean, going to those domains would be uh, use cases like monitoring. You know, every bot can monitor what happens that it's touching. It can monitor who's using what, who's trying to get access, what the outcome is. And you think about healthcare, what needs to be monitored is basically everything. Healthcare is regulated from top to bottom. And it's nice to know that, you know, we have folks in our team and our company like yourself with, you know, yeah. such a vast and extensive um, expertise in the, in the industry uh, here mm -hmm. to help. So I appreciate that. And I appreciate you sharing time with us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Pleasure to be here.